With a new generation of AMD GPUs announcement literally around the corner and rumored improvements in ray tracing especially, I wanted us to take a look at about a dozen ray tracing games on my Nitro Plus RX 7900 XDX. I'll split the video in a few different parts because it'd be way too long, but to make this a bit more interesting, I'll also be comparing it to my Strix 3080 Ti, because in the past when I've compared these two GPUs in ray tracing games, they've been fairly comparable actually. I'll be using my Ryzen 9800X3D CPU with 32 gigs of RAM at 1440p. All the specs will be in the description. We're going to start with Dying Light 2 Stay Human. This game came out a couple years, two to three years ago, I believe, and it had pretty good ray tracing implementation at the time. Like I said, we're going to focus on 1440p for this video. We've maxed out all the ray tracing effects, including ray traced flashlight, which looks awesome, by the way. I did want to start by looking at the built in benchmark first, and then we can take a look at a little bit of gameplay. But it looks like both GPUs with the 7900 XTX on the left and 3080 Ti on the right, they seem to be pretty much almost identical in performance as far as the built in benchmark goes. Now, interestingly, I did look at this game on both of these GPUs about a year ago. And the 3080 Ti was a little bit faster, actually. So this is kind of cool. It looks like the XX has cut up a little bit, maybe with driver improvements. I'm not entirely sure. But if we skip over to the end and look at the benchmark results on the 7900 XTX, we have 8,797 total frames rendered, 64 minimum, and 112 max FPS. And then on the 3080 Ti, we have 8,913 frames rendered 63 minimum 113 max fps so very very close now before we look at the gameplay i did want to point out as a ray tracing fan the ray trace flashlight here looks so good you can see how the light accurately bounces as it hits that broken mirror and then you also have the lockers on the right casting very accurate shadows and this has to be one of the best looking uh, flashlights in a game that I've personally seen. It looks absolutely fantastic in this particular scenario. Like, you can turn it off and look at that, guys. It looks totally different. Very, very different. That is really, really cool. But anyway, let's look at the actual gameplay performance. I just felt I had to point that out because I do tend to appreciate these things. All right, so we're going to start here from inside the base, and I basically just ran outside, attacked a couple zombies, and then I just ran across the rooftops, and then measured averages and 1% lows. And the 7900XX actually did really well in this game. This game is quite GPU intensive when it comes to ray tracing as well. And what we ended up with on the 7900XX was 70 FPS for average and 56 FPS for 1% lows. That's pretty good. On the 3080 Ti, we ended up doing the same exact run and the results were actually not that much different from the video I did about a year or so ago. The 3080 Ti was a little bit ahead, not a lot, but we ended up averaging 78 FPS on the 3080 Ti versus 70 FPS on the 7900 XTX. Our 1% lows were actually identical, 56 FPS for the 1% lows. So, that is actually quite impressive because, I mean, the game is NVIDIA sponsored and being NVIDIA sponsored has quite a lot of ray tracing. We have ray tracing shadows, ambient occlusion, global illumination, reflections, and the really nice looking flashlight as well. Now, unfortunately, I don't think the game has FSR. I didn't specifically look for it because I was mostly focused on doing uh, native 1440p, but the game obviously does have DLSS. And from what I heard, there is an FSR 3 mod for the game, but it is a pretty good game. It looks really, really nice. And there's also a sequel to the game pretty much right around the corner. But yeah, Dying Light 2, I'd say the XX does pretty good. 3080 Ti is about a 4070 Super to maybe a 4070 Ti. You know, for an NVIDIA sponsored game with quite a lot of ray tracing, that's not bad at all. All right, anyway, let's move on to the next game. Dragon Age The Veilguard may not have been a very good Dragon Age game, not even close, but it is quite interesting from a technical perspective, actually. And even though it is an NVIDIA sponsored title with quite a bit of uh, heavy ray tracing, 
it's one where the Radeon GPUs actually do surprisingly well. So here we are running the game at 1440p with ray trace reflections and ambient occlusion enabled and ultra ray tracing set to on. And I did want to begin here in this Allen Forest because it is a quite a demanding area, this one. That's why I use this for all my testing, basically. And this is at native 1440p. We will try FSR, but I have to say, this is actually pretty good. Again, this game is quite a bit demanding. And if you look at the VRAM use, actually, we're uh, using, actually, 13.5 gigs. So I'm kind of concerned about the 3080 Ti. Speaking of which, here it is. We are using the same exact settings, TAA high native for now, but we'll test upscaling as well. And look at our graphical VRAM use to the bottom right, guys. It says that we are on the red. So this should be fairly interesting. And right away, we start off with uh, quite a bit less FPS here. But surprisingly, there is no stuttering or anything like that. The game is still fairly smooth, although there is a, a bit of a hitch here and there. But what we had on the 7900 XTX, we had 57 average and 49 1% lows. On the 3080 Ti, we had 50 average and 40 1% low. So the 3080 Ti is quite a little bit behind the 7900 XTX in this particular case. Now let's go back to the 7900 XTX and enable FSR quality. And that takes us all the way up to close to 70 FPS. And just remember that this, the Elven Forest, is a more demanding area. And that's why I'm using it. So yeah, the 7900 XTX actually does really, really good here. Unfortunately, there is no FSR frame generation. There is DLSS frame generation, but yeah, no FSR frame generation because uh, DLSS frame generation actually works really well here. Uh, it doesn't work great in some games, but here it actually works more or less as advertised. So I'm not sure why there is no FSR frame generation. You know what's weird is Jedi Survivor, which we'll, we'll be looking at uh, in a little bit, that runs on the same engine and that was even amd sponsored and it doesn't have fsr frame generation either but has dlss frame generation i wonder what's up with that but anyway if we look at our averages of one percent lows with fsr quality we're at 77 fps by the end of the run for average and 59 fps for one percent lows that's actually really really good and even though this may not be the best dragon age game by a long shot it was actually fun to play. The combat is actually fun, and I really do like the graphics. I think the art style is pretty good. And if we swap over back to the 3080 Ti and use DLSS to quality, we're already starting a bit below the 7900 XTX here. And yeah, it looks like we're stuttering a bit, and then there we go. We seem to be okay now. And we did the same exact run and we got 63 fps average on the 3080 ti versus 77 fps average on the 7900 xtx so yeah the 7900 xtx is quite a bit ahead and for one percent lows the 7900 xtx was at 59 fps where the 3080 ti was at 48 fps one percent lows now i was thinking about this in retrospect that could it be maybe a VRAM limitation? But I don't really see those signs. Uh, I don't see any stutters or anything like that. The game could be uh, switching uh, asset quality on the fly, maybe. I didn't pay that much close attention to it because I just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison for you guys and just to show how the XDX does in relation to the 3080 Ti. But yeah, I mean, either way, the game is still very, very playable on the 3080 Ti with ray tracing as well if you wanted to play it that way. And DLSS quality looks pretty good. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next game. And for the next game, I wanted to take a look at Black Myth Wukong because it's a very popular and very good game, but it also has path tracing. So I did add a couple path tracing games so that we can take a look at out of curiosity. Whenever I've done this in the past, my conclusion has always been that path tracing is just not worth it on Radeon GPUs or even most NVIDIA GPUs for that matter because it's so demanding. And I wanted to start with 1440p here obviously and we've just enabled full ray tracing aka path tracing and set it to low and as you guys can see we're getting terrible performance here now i will show you later too how the game runs without path tracing xdx crushes it there but 
Let's go ahead and try to use a bit of FSR here. We'll set FSR to 57% and see what we get here. And we're actually surprisingly decent. We appear to be between 40 and 50 as far as averages go. But yeah, I mean, I think it's playable, but is it really worth it? In my opinion, not really. Even though path tracing can make the game's shadows especially look quite nice. Now, if we increase our path tracing from low to medium, actually the cost and performance isn't really all that different. We basically go, it's, it's around the same, more or less, going from low to medium. The highest cost is going from medium to very high, which is the next step up. So yeah, let's take a look at that. All right, so we'll go from medium to very high full ray tracing, AKA path tracing. And yeah, we drop all the way into the 30s. And also, FSR doesn't look all that great here, as you can see, especially this, which is very aggressive FSR, by the way. It's dropped us all the way to like 56, 57% uh, that we set it to. Totally not worth it, but we're taking a look at it anyway. But anyway, let's look at the 3080 Ti real quick in the same exact scenario. And then I'll show you what you can get just ignoring full ray tracing. The game has ray tracing anyway. Software Lumen. Okay, so we've now jumped to the 3080 Ti at 1440p, 100% resolution scale, and we've set full ray tracing to low, just like the 7900 XTX. And the 3080 Ti actually has uh, quite a bit of an advantage here. The XTX, we averaged 25 FPS. On the 3080 Ti, we're at 38 FPS. That's quite a bit more. Now, if we try to use a bit aggressive DLSS like we did with FSR, and we set it to 50% resolution scale, which is a bit aggressive, even for DLSS at 1440p, well, now we go all the way to 73 FPS average versus the 48 FPS on the XTX. So, yeah, uh, even though the XTX can match a 3080 Ti in, uh, and even surpass it in some lighter ray tracing workloads. When it comes to path tracing, as you can see, Radeon is at quite a bit of a disadvantage. That's why I say it's not really worth it, but this is pretty playable. I mean, 71 FPS it looks all right, but what about if we increase it to medium? Well, let's take a look at that. We'll increase full ray tracing level from low to medium, and it doesn't actually cost us that much more. It was the same on the XDX. We end up with around 70 FPS uh, versus the 48 on the XDX. But what about high? That is the highest you can go on the path tracing. Well, let's check it out. Let's set it to very high. And we end up with around 47 FPS versus 31 on the XDX. So yeah, 3080 Ti definitely has an advantage when it comes to path tracing. But what about if you just turn that off? Okay, if we go back and turn full ray tracing off, obviously you have to restart the game. We set the resolution scale back to 100% with uh, the FSR because it's kind of what we have to use. Fortunately, it does have a little bit of ghosting, but the difference in performance, it's absolutely insane. So we did this run here, just whacked a couple enemies and just played around in this area here and we ended up with 92 FPS average and 74 FPS for 1% lows on the 7900 XDX at 1440p native in Black Myth Wukong and that is excellent excellent FPS the game ran absolutely beautiful and it was it still looks really really good obviously now the 3080 Ti well, the 3080 Ti does fall a little bit behind now. We average 92 FPS on the XDX on the 3080 Ti in the same exact run. We averaged 76. Still very good, very respectable. And then for 1% lows, the XDX was quite a bit ahead at 74 FPS with the 3080 Ti's 1% lows at 61 FPS. I mean, both cards provide a very good and playable experience, obviously, but the XDX is definitely a bit ahead, which is what you would expect in an Unreal Engine 5, you know, without the use of uh, hardware Lumen, but we are gonna look at hardware Lumen as well in Silent Hill 2. And here we go, guys. We're all taking a look at Silent Hill 2, which has hardware Lumen. It's one of the few Unreal Engine 5 games to have hardware Lumen with Black Myth Wukong being another one, although that is more of a, like an NVIDIA extension of Unreal Engine 5. 
which could potentially explain why it's so demanding on Radeon, but that's just speculation. Either way, we're going to start at 1440p with ray tracing set to on. What that means is that we're using hardware lumen instead of software lumen, which would be if we had ray tracing set to off. There's always ray tracing. Other than that, all the other settings here are fully maxed out. Unfortunately, this game had some stuttering issues, but they've actually improved it quite a bit. There's still some hitches, but it's quite a bit better. And the 7900 XDX with hardware ray tracing on at 1440p actually does a pretty good job. What we did was we just ran at the end of the street, uh, just looking around the area, taking our averages and 1% lows. At the end, we averaged 58 FPS, and for 1% lows, we ended up with... 41 fps and now the game even with the hardware ray tracing disabled it still looks really really nice overall the game looks great it always has uh, ray tracing enabled it's either software or hardware and obviously hardware is going to be a little bit more demanding but also a lot more accurate as well a pretty good example is with the reflections not only do you get a lot more accurate reflections with hardware ray tracing enabled but you also get dynamic objects like enemies as you can see you can see their full reflection on the puddle but also on the wet ground as well as you can see he's not on the screen but yet we can see his reflections now if you were to disable hardware lumen and just use software ray tracing well you don't get those reflections anymore all you get is screen space so obviously the enemy would have to be on the view of the camera in order to be reflected obviously you guys know what that is so yeah the hardware ray tracing does make the game look quite a bit better quite a bit more accurate but if we look at the 3080 ti we're going to use the same exact settings here obviously we have hardware ray tracing enabled all the other settings have been maxed out it's actually quite close to the 7900 XTX. So we average 58 FPS on the XTX and we average 55 FPS on the 3080 Ti. For 1% lows on the XTX we had 41 FPS and on the 3080 Ti we have 37. So pretty close. So yeah, I guess to wrap up the part one of this video, I have quite a few more games to show you guys. It'll be a separate video because I didn't want this to be way too long. But it looks like to me, like the 7900 XTX is actually very comparable to the 3080 Ti when it comes to ray tracing. If it's more complex ray tracing, they can be fairly comparable to the 3080 Ti maybe being ahead a little bit. When it comes to path tracing, just in general, Radeon is at quite a bit of a disadvantage. And I don't particularly think it's worth it. Or is it really worth it to, to use path tracing on the 3080 Ti? Really, although you could, it, you definitely could if you wanted to now on lighter ray tracing workloads i didn't focus too much on that because you got games like for example resident evil 4 has ray tracing but it's garbage it doesn't look great but we are going to look at a game that uses light ray tracing in those scenarios the xdx would be quite a bit ahead and when it comes to unreal engine 5 with just software lumen yeah the xdx has a pretty good advantage but that's going to be it, guys, for part one of this video. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. I really look forward to see what AMD is going to deliver tomorrow in their presentation. I really want to see what type of ray tracing advancements they have made. Really looking forward to it as a fan of ray tracing. But I'll see you guys on the next one. Please like, subscribe, and comment.